Hello, welcome to this wrestling video. I don't do too many of them these days. Of course, my channel was was founded on wrestling videos, but I'm still a wrestling fan. I still watch every now and again. Don't watch regularly, but I do make sure I check out all the pay-per-views and stuff. And of course, WrestleMania every year is going to be must-watch. So today, I'm really looking forward to WrestleMania. Not so much the card, but more of the spectacle itself. And I always feel like the spectacle of WrestleMania uh, it is part of the show that is must see and this year like no other if you see the set reveal that they posted a couple of days ago showing you the stage they've created over there in Orlando it looks incredible I, I just want to see those big entrances and those big pyros and all that kind of cool stuff so I'm really excited for it even though I'm not the biggest fan of the card so I'm going to talk to you about my thoughts on the card and of course my predictions and by the time this video goes up because I'm filming it on Sunday WrestleMania will be a few hours away and probably not many people will even watch this, but what the hell I'm going to do it anyway because I feel like talking about it, I have a lot to say. So, let's just run through the card. The pre-show or the kickoff, whatever they want to call it these days. We have uh, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I don't really care about this, really. Uh, I don't feel like it really does much for anyone who wins it. I was there when Cesaro won it at WrestleMania 30. It felt huge. It felt like a big moment when he scoop slammed Big Show out of the ring. Didn't really do much for him after that. The year after that, the Big Show won. Didn't do anything for him. The year after that, Baron Corbin won. And you can argue that he kind of benefited from it more than the previous two winners. But still, you know, I just don't feel like it, it means that much. But I'm a big fan of the idea. I like it. It gets a lot of people on the card who wouldn't ordinarily have a match. And you have, like, the trophy with the, the name carved on it every year. It kind of reminds me of Wimbledon, in a way, when they have the, the board in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the back outside of the tennis court. So I like the idea of it. But I don't really care about the match that much. So I think Braun Strowman has is, is got to be the shoe-in to win here. They put so much time into him recently. It feels like that he's going to be the guy to win it and get kind of that rub. Uh, and probably dump out Big Show to finish it, I think. Uh, and I'm going to go through who I think will win and who I think should win. So for me, it's, it's Braun Strowman uh, in both cases. But I could see them putting someone else over just for the sake of, of going against what we expect. Because they like to do that sometimes. Um, the, the Cruiserweight title. Is going to be on the line. Neville defending against Austin Aries. Hugely surprised by this match. I thought they'd do a big cruiserweight kind of, you know, just massive scramble match. But they didn't. They went with a single one-on-one -on -one match and they made it a really epic one like Austin Aries versus Neville. I never thought I'd see this match, let alone at WrestleMania. And I know it's on the pre-show. And trust me, that bothers me, uh, you know, probably more than anyone, I feel. I'd like to know what Neville feels about that. And I have a connection with Neville because... Um, as I was entering the UK Backyard Wrestling community, he was leaving, and I was kind of there at this event that he was at, and I'm good friends with the people who used to wrestle with him, and so it's kind of like seeing one of one of my boys, one of my backyard brothers going up on the, the big stage at WrestleMania, and it's really, really cool, and I just wish that it was the main show. You know, I really, really wish it was the main show, because you can, you can color it however you want. You can say, well, they're there at WrestleMania in front of that crowd, and it's like, yeah, but it's... It's the pre-show, you know, it's the Sunday night heat before the, 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 the main meal, it's not quite Wrestlemania. Uh, I, I just, I'm really disappointed, I feel like they should have been on the main card, they should have been given that chance, that opportunity, I know they're going to have a great match if they're given the time to, uh, and I feel like The Miz and, not The Miz, um, uh, Dean Ambrose and Baron Corbin for the Intercontinental Championship should have been on the pre-show in my opinion, but I, I guess the IC title is, is more prestigious, but... For match quality, I don't know, uh, and I guess match quality isn't really something that they put too much importance behind at WWE, so uh, that's probably why it's on the pre-show. But I hope it's the main event in the pre-show, because it's a two-hour pre-show, and at certain points in the pre-show, that, that that stadium isn't going to be full, you know, and there's not going to be many people watching, and so I just really hope they wait until the very end, you know, so the crowd is almost there for Neville, Austin Aries. I, I don't know who is going to win, which is great. Uh, I'd like to see Neville retain. I think he's doing the, the best work of his career right now with the heel stuff. Of course, his work has always been incredible, even back to the backyard days. I mean, he's always been, like, just one of those special breeds of wrestlers who just had that instinct for it, uh, just, like, incredibly gifted as an athlete and a performer and Austin Aries I haven't seen much of I mean he's had such a name was on the indies for years um, but what I've seen of him in, in WWE has been really really good so I think it'll be a great match I'd like to see Neville retain and I'm going to go with Neville retaining as well the main show uh, we'll just go with uh, Baron Corbin and Dean Ambrose I really don't care about this match like at all whatsoever uh, I mean that might be the the bathroom break for me I don't, it depends when it <laughs> when it's on the card I like both guys. I think Baron Corbin's got potential. He hasn't quite tapped into it yet. Dean Ambrose, I feel like, has dropped the ball somewhat. I was really glad when he won the title last year, but I just don't feel like he... 
uh, took advantage of it. I don't know. I guess that he's just being himself, but I just didn't feel like he fully grasped that, that opportunity of being the champion. I don't know. Um, I think it'll be a good match, maybe not a great match, and I think that uh, Brian Corbin should probably win it, and I think he will win it as well. Uh, Smackdown women's uh, match, which was going to be on the pre-show, and they now bumped it up to the main show. Uh, I forget who's in it, but it, I think it's the six six women for, for the Smackdown Women's Championship, and Alexa Bliss is the current champion. Um, I don't know whether they want to put the belt back onto Naomi, because she won it recently and then had to give it up for injury. It is her hometown, so th they like to not have people win in their hometown, so I don't think she will. Uh, I mean, Carmella isn't going to win it, uh, Natalia isn't going to win it, Mickey James ain't going to win it, so it's really between Alexa Bliss and Becky Lynch, I, th I feel. And I think they should go with Alexa Bliss retaining, and that's going to be my prediction as well, I think. I'm not going to spend too much time on that one, because I haven't really watched <coughs> a lot of the SmackDown stuff uh, as far as the women are concerned. In fact, as far as anything, all I've been following really is the AJ Styles stuff. Let's just get to that, shall we? AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon. Uh, really annoyed by this, I think a lot of people are, and it's kind of beating a dead ho horse by this point, but I really was disappointed that this was the match they had for AJ Styles. Apparently the plan was to have AJ Styles versus Shawn Michaels. They should have known that Shawn was never going to do that, as, as much as it would have been a great match, the story just isn't there for him, and, and he's done. He's done. You know, he can still go, but he's done. And after that, they're like, well, we got nothing for AJ. Uh, let's put him against Shane. And it, it's 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 mind-boggling to me because you have the best performer in the company. And last year, he, he had the best year of anybody. Uh, when he came in, there was a big buzz around him. By the time it got to WrestleMania, Chris Jericho, it seemed like he wasn't really going to break through to that next level. The next night, he won the, the number one contendership, and he never looked back since. He had great matches with Roman Reigns. He became the WWE champion. He became such a star in the WWE. And I just feel like that warrants the main event at WrestleMania. If you've had the best year and you have that much of a following from the crowd, you're that popular and that good at your job and that good in the ring, you should be the main event at WrestleMania. Um, that's just me. That, that's always going to be my, my feeling on it. I feel like the main event at WrestleMania should be between the best wrestlers who, who have put in the work, put in the time and have gotten over as much in the, in the previous calendar year. But it never really works out like that, unfortunately. So nothing for AJ Styles as far as a main event goes. I mean, Vince likes to call this a main event because it's one of the featured matches, but it just isn't. And I love Shane McMahon, and don't get me wrong, I'd love to see, and I will love to see, these two have a match together because Shane can really pull out those big match kind of situations. He can really um, entertain people with the stuff that he's willing to put his body through. But I don't think feel like this is the right time to do it. WrestleMania. I mean, AJ Styles is no spring chicken. He is. He's not got you know a, a ten years ahead of him probably. That that's that that seems very unlikely to me. He's in his late thirties now. You need to take advantage of him when he's in his prime. But we we have it. We got to see it. And, and I I mean, I'd love to see Shane come out and say, look, two weeks ago I kicked your ass on SmackDown. You know, you got your receipt for beating me up, and and I know I can't out wrestle you because if you see in the in the build up, Shane's been putting AJ over like, you know, I I don't like you as as a person. But uh, you know, I can't knock the fact that you are you are the best wrestler in the world, as far as I can tell. Um, so, so surely Shane would know that he can't out wrestle. Cause they, they they're building this as a wrestling match. There's no uh, you know street fight rule or anything like that. And, and AJ's like you're not going to be able to take it outside of the ring. So I don't know what they're going to do. But I could see Shane. Well, I couldn't see Shane coming out, but I'd like to see Shane coming out and saying, "Look, I kicked your ass two weeks ago." But I'm, I'm not an idiot. I know I can't out-wrestle you. You're the best in the world. But if you want to stay on my show, if you want to stay on SmackDown, you got to beat SmackDown's newest signee. I think you know the guy. you got to be a history with him. Shinsuke Nakamura comes out. I mean, he just lost uh, his, his match at NXT last night. Perfect timing. The crowd would go mental, and you'd have a 20-minute instant classic. But... It's not going to happen, because Vince wants Shane to have a match. Uh, so we're, we're going to see it. And AJ should win. And AJ will win. And if he doesn't, then it's it's kind of just, again, a wasted opportunity. Although I already feel like it is. And people can say, oh, you know, you can be an armchair, bo armchair booker and, and be like, oh, they should do this, they should do that. What do you know? Hey, other people are saying it. Stone Cold in his podcast was like, man, you know, AJ Styles, the best guy you got, and you're putting him against the general manager. No offense to Shane. You know, he, he can work. He can have great matches. But that's all you got for AJ Styles? I mean, if that doesn't say it. You know, I mean... It's frustrating. Let's move on. Uh, what other match we got? The the three way tag team match: uh, Gallows and Anderson, uh, Enzo and Cass, and 
Cesaro and Sheamus, who, who've turned into quite a, a, an interesting coupling over the past six months or so. Um, and that it's, a, it's a ladder match, which makes it a lot more exciting. I'm looking forward to a lot more now. Um, Gallows and Anderson, I really haven't seen much from them. I just, I'm not feeling it, you know. And people say they're so entertaining, I just haven't seen it yet. I feel like they're being choked by the WWE system because I just, I don't have any interest in them besides their pretty cool theme music. Uh, I love Cesaro, love Cesaro. Sheamus is really good. I don't like the way they book him, uh, his character. Uh, Enzo and Cass are a lot of fun. They're not going to be the best wrestlers in the world. In fact, Triple H said in, in an interview recently, he said, "Is it you know is Enzo going to make us money as an in-ring performer? Probably not." <laughs> I was like, "Wow, I mean, it's true, but <laughs> holy shit, he said it." Uh, but on the money, on the money, on the mic, he's money. I'll leave that one in, and that's true. He is money on the mic. Enzo is one of the best talkers they've had for a long time. And I feel like based on the popularity, I think Enzo and Cash should win. It'd be a big feel-good moment. Uh, they haven't won the tag team titles yet. Perfect moment to do it. Uh, and it'd be a great WrestleMania moment. So I'm going to pick, that's going to be my prediction. And also what I think um, should happen as well. Then we have uh, Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. I'm really looking forward to this. I've always liked Roman Reigns. I, I hate the fact that WWE have booked him in such a fashion that the crowd are going to boo him because they feel like he's being pushed and shoved down our throats. Uh, and it's the old thing again, you know, if they turned him heel, the crowd would start to like him again. Uh, and then it would be a more natural transition to being that top baby face. But uh, it's easier said than done, I think. But I feel like they've done too much damage at this point to, to fully get Roman Reigns to the place they want. He's going to be one of those Cena types who gets booed, gets cheered. But I mean, it's not like Cena where you got an even split. It, it's mostly boos. And and I and I feel really bad for Roman because he's a really really cool guy. I listen to him on Jericho's podcast. Seems like such a cool, chill guy, but a driven guy as well. And he's and he's really talented. People don't give him credit for this. They say he's a, a bad worker. Bullshit. Absolute fucking bullshit. He is a great worker. He's not a phenomenal worker. He's not on the level of an AJ Styles. But I mean, he he is really good at what he does. It's just the way that he's been booked, you know, and, and choices that get made along the way that I feel aren't his. You know, to see him take a Superman punch from Kevin Owens at the Royal Rumble with a brass knuck on his hand, and he kicks out too. It's like, come on, like you you, you can't be be kind of giving him those moments where it just seems like he's this unstoppable force, and yet on commentary you're like, oh, Roman Reigns is overcoming the odds. It's like, well, no, he's he's steamrolling everyone. You know, something doesn't quite add up when you get to Roman Reigns as far as the presentation comes from from everything, from the way they talk about him commentary to the way that he is uh, the promos he's been written to say. You know, so that there's all these little things that kind of work against Roman Reigns, which is really unfortunate. And he's got this big match against The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And Undertaker, you know, what do you say about The Undertaker? When should he have, hit, if he retired, when should he have called it a day? Should he have left at WrestleMania 30? In a way, I wish he had. In a way, I'm glad he didn't because, he, you know, he got knocked out in that match and it wasn't a great match. And he got to come back and wrestle Bray Wyatt and Shane McMahon in two very good matches, but not great matches. And so, has he got one more classic left in him? And can Roman Reigns pull that out of him? Apparently, Undertaker's hip is really hurt and he needs to have it replaced, which is a pretty serious, uh, not injury, but kind of a nagging issue. Uh, and he's been seen limping backstage and stuff, so it's really worrying, you know, is he going to be able to go longer than 10 minutes, you know, is it going to be a disaster? I'm really nervous for it, but I, hopefully they can pull off a great match, and I think Roman Reigns should win. Even though the crowd is going to completely shit all over it, and apparently the word is they might put this match on last, which speaks to, you know, the idea that maybe Taker is going to retire. But the crowd are going to boo it out of the building, and it's, again, really unfortunate, and, and no matter what you do, you could have Reigns beat Undertaker, you know, crowd boos the hell out of it, Undertaker gets up, shakes his hand, gets on the mic and says, Roman, you're the best wrestler I've ever worked with. He can get down on his knees and suck Roman's dick and the crowd is still not going to stop booing. Like, there's there's nothing you can do. There's no way you can get that crowd to accept Roman Reigns beating the Undertaker at WrestleMania. So, why not take advantage of that and turn Roman Reigns heel? But from what I've heard, Roman Reigns is the number one merchandise seller for a full-timer. And so they want to keep moving forward with him as the top good guy of the company, which just doesn't work. Uh, and in interviews, Triple H is saying, well, he is a heel because 70% of the crowd boo him. That's a heel, isn't it? Uh, such a horrible corporate bullshit, you know, shill thing to say when Triple H knows full well, better than anybody. He's one of the smartest minds in the wrestling business. He knows that's not what a heel is. A heel isn't someone who gets booed uh, and that's it. A heel is someone who, who acts like a heel. 
you know, a heel is someone who is trying to get booze. Yeah, you know, Roman Reigns is not trying to get booze. He's booked as a babyface and he's getting booze. It doesn't work, right? And Roman Reigns said himself on Joker's podcast, he's like, well, what I'm doing is uncharted territory. It's never been done before. You know, people can boo me. But it's like, no, Cena, what are you talking about? You know, again, I like him, but you know, some of the things that people say, it, it makes you scratch your head. And I'm looking forward to the match, but the crowd are going to shit all over it, you know, unless they go with take a winning, which is a possibility. But I feel like the past few years have been designed to be the coronation of Roman Reigns. And we're probably going to get that again this year and again next year with... He goes on to face Brock Lesnar. But my prediction is Roman Reigns, and I think Roman Reigns should win. I think Taker should should just kind of bite the bullet and just, just have the last match. Apparently he retired last year. He left his gloves in the ring after Shane McMahon and said to everyone, I said, I'm done. So I, I don't know what happened to convince him to come back. Maybe Vince got in his ear, I don't know. But, you know, hopefully he can have one last great match. And it's his 25th WrestleMania. You know, so that's a pretty round number to go off on, whether he wins or loses. And I feel like Taker's the guy who'd want to put someone over on the way out. It's just a shame that the crowd, again, are going to shit all over it. Um, but I like the way Roman's been acting heelish in the build-up to it. Uh, I just wish they'd follow through on that, you know, if, if that makes sense. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the women's match. This is another one I want to rant about. Uh, Nia Jax versus Bailey versus Charlotte versus Sasha Banks. Uh, Nia Jax, everyone's been saying this, she, she's not quite ready for a, a, a big WrestleMania match. Then again, you know, who's to say who's ready? But I, I don't feel like she should be there. She's been put in there just to kind of, you know, get someone else onto the card. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess they've got long-term plans for her, and so this is kind of to include her, I guess. But they've said it's an elimination match. So I'm hoping that the three of them team up on Nia Jax early and get her out of the match, much like the main event of WrestleMania 2000, where they got the big show out early. And then those three, you know, the, 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 the three best, can kind of have a cracking match. Like, I mean, last year, Charlotte versus Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks was the best match of the show. The women stole the show. It was incredible. They could do the same here if they get Nia Jax out of the way early, I feel like. But I, I, I don't think they will because the story isn't there. And that's what's really frustrating to me. And people really moaned about the whole Charlotte-Sasha feud that happened over the past six months. I really liked it. I liked this back and forth and the title change hands and stuff. And yeah, it was a bit of bullshit that Charlotte would, would only kind of lose on Raw and then win the title back on pay-per-view because they want to keep her pay-per-view streak going. But I really liked the back and forth of it. It was a really cool feud with some great matches. Um, but they kind of just took the story that, that was there for WrestleMania and they just cut it out before it even got started. Uh, and that is, is, is Bailey's story and Charlotte's story. Charlotte's story was she was undefeated, like 16 pay-per-views, unprecedented, this huge streak of being undefeated in, in singles matches or whatever. I think she may have been involved in a multi-man or something, but 16, I think it was 16 uh, pay-per-views undefeated. Going into WrestleMania 33, undefeated in pay-per-views, she's got so much on the line. If she lost at WrestleMania, it'd be a huge moment, right? Bailey never won the women's championship before. That was her story, going in to win the big one at WrestleMania. And at Fastlane, a month ago, like the, the most kind of nondescript pay-per-view of the entire calendar year, they, they cut both of them off at the same time. Bailey wins the title, Charlotte's un undefeated streak is broken, and everyone's like, oh, oh, okay, they weren't expecting it. No reaction, like... You had a great story, and you just just cut the legs out from underneath it straight away. You know, so now if Bailey wins, she's just defending the title she's already won. If Charlotte loses, she's already lost. You know, so it could, it could be a great match, but the story, it's so frustrating. I don't understand why they did it. I think Bailey won the title too soon. I'm not saying she's not ready for it, but her character should be the chaser. Uh, and she had one attempt at the title, and then on a second attempt, she won. It just wasn't the. the the long-term storytelling just isn't there anymore. They rush things so much. I know that the way the world works now is that things are moving so fast, but uh, take your time with it. You know, take. I mean, I would have been fine with them having Bailey kind of stay away from the title for like a year. I mean, challenge for it and keep coming up short, and then by the time she wins it, it's a big moment. Whereas when she won it against Charlotte, it was just like a mediocre pop. You know, can you imagine WrestleMania winning the title there? So I think the only way they can save this is a kind of Sasha heel turn, uh, specifically against um, Bailey. you know, her kind of best friend in real life, but also on screen. They've implemented that into the storyline now. I think that's what will make it interesting, give it the story. But, I mean, you could have done that as well as the other. You would have had three great stories at play. Sasha turning heel on her best friend, Bailey winning the title at the big one, and Charlotte losing her undefeated. So it would have been this huge moment and could have stolen the show easily. But, you know, uh, we'll see what happens. I hope they have a really good match because I, I like what they're doing. And uh, 
I think that um, prediction wise I don't know actually I really don't know I think Charlotte should win uh, I love Bailey but I feel like Charlotte is is the best in terms of everything she has the the charisma uh, and she holds herself like a champion she holds herself like a big deal I think Bailey's the best wrestler right now but Charlotte has the the, the better overall package you know uh, and so I feel like she should probably win it there but I think Bailey might end up kind of defending it and, and retaining it, I should say. So my prediction is Bailey retains, but I think Charlotte should win, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, what else is there? There's two more. We've got um, Randy Orton challenging Bray Wyatt for the WWE title. Um, I'm looking forward to this match. I think it's going to be slow and methodical, not kind of um, you know fast and, and really entertaining, and it'll grab the crowd that much. But I think by the final moments, if they build the story well, it'll be really good. Uh, their build has been interesting. I like that they've gone out there with it, but it's it's been kind of hit and miss. I feel. Uh, I'm looking forward to the match. I really like Bray Wyatt, and I'm really glad he's finally got his moment to be the champion and and to go somewhere. It feels like this is three years in the making. You know, WrestleMania 30. He felt like he was being primed for the big time when he had that match with Cena, and then Cena beat him and kind of just floundered ever since. I guess he had the match with Undertaker, but I mean, it, it's just. And then last year he didn't even have a match. It's like, what's going on with Bray Wyatt? This guy is is incredible. He's got, he's got great mic skills. He's a very good worker, and he's got a good character. The, the, this deluded kind of god complex figure, and I'm so glad he's the champion now. Um, and I think they'll have a good match, and I really hope Bray Wyatt retains, and that's going to be my prediction too. I don't think Randy Orton needs a title at this stage in his career whatsoever. So, yeah, uh, that's my prediction and what I hope for this match. Then we have, uh, finally, unless I've missed anything, which I might have because there's so many matches. There's, oh, no, there's The Miz. The Miz and Maurice versus John Cena and Nikki Bella. Um, the build has been fun for that. I'm looking forward to it. I think Cena and, and Nikki Bella are going to win. Not much more to say about it than that. I think it'll be really entertaining. The Miz is great. He's really stepped his game up uh, once again this past year, so he really deserved a big match like this. And I think it'll be a lot of fun, um, but but nothing too elaborate, like a 10-minute match. And um, there's been kind of talk of John Cena proposing to Nikki Bella after the match. That sounds a bit cringeworthy to me, but we'll see what happens. Uh, right, so the main event, maybe, depending on whether they put Roman and Taker on last. Brock Lesnar versus the Universal Champion Goldberg. I feel so sorry for Goldberg again. Much like Roman Reigns, Goldberg came back and I thought the crowd are going to shit on him, just like they did with Batista. Crowd loved him. It was awesome. I felt so good because you can just tell Goldberg is a really nice guy. He really cares about the kids. That's what he loves to do is to kind of give back to the kids who are fans of his and stuff. He seems like such a nice guy. He came back. I hope the crowd would, would be nice to him and they, they were. He had that great match with Brock Lesnar. I mean, you can debate whether it was a great match, but it was a great moment. And the crowd loved it. And that's probably when Vince was like, let's, let's put the title on him. And I think it was one step too far because he won the title from Kevin Owens, who was kind of beloved. I forgot Kevin Owens, we'll get to that in a second. Again, the card is so huge, I forget them. Um, the crowd kind of turned against it a bit when Kevin Owens got kind of just trampled again by Goldberg. And then at the Hall of Fame, the, the crowd were booing him mercilessly. And it's like, oh no, it's going to be another WrestleMania 20 disaster with these two. Um, I have no idea what Goldberg can do beyond a minute and 30 seconds. I hope he can do more than what we're expecting. Uh, I hope they can deliver more than than what, you know, again, we're probably expecting. But, you know, if it's going to be the main event, it needs to be like a 10-minute match at least. It doesn't need to go too long, but we need to get something. It, it can't just be F5 and done. It can't just be Spear, Jackhammer and done. It needs to be a match, a back-and-forth fight. And I was so disappointed with the build-up um, last, last week on Raw. You know, those two should have been ripping each other's, you know, just absolutely going mad, just fighting, brawling into the crowd against the barricade. The, 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 the back should have come down. All the the, the referees and the, the medical team pulling them apart. A big massive brawl. These two are going to tear each other apart at WrestleMania. But instead, he spears Brock Lesnar, and then poses with the belt, and, and that's it. You know, it just it hasn't had that kind of intensity that it needs. I mean, I've loved the story of him always getting one up on Brock. That's a great story, you know, because Brock is coming in with something to prove. And I guess Goldberg is as well, but it just it doesn't have that fire and intensity that it needs to in a back-and-forth kind of situation, I feel like. I'm really intrigued, though. This is a match I'm really looking forward to just to see what happens, much like a Survivor Series. But now, that more needs to be delivered on than what's been done already, I think. So, uh, so <laughs> that was almost it, but I forgot about the Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho match for the U.S. title. 
<coughs> which, you know, eh, I, I, I don't think the US title really means that much at this point. It's just being handed around to people. It, you know, Cena did a, a great job with it, um, I think, a couple of years ago. But at this point, it just it's it's dressing, you know. And, uh, and Chris uh, from CM42 TV, the Good Bit podcast, was talking about how this match was primed for a universal title to be involved in the storyline because Kevin Owens had that title for so long and Jericho was the one keeping it on him. And so he could lay claim to it, and it was such a good story. But I mean, you know, Goldberg and Brock Lesnar, I guess. Um, really looking forward to this one. Uh, if anyone can, can kind of steal the show without people maybe thinking they might, I think it's these two. Kevin Owens is great. Chris Jericho, you know, he he can't go as as, as good as he used to, but it, he's pretty close. I mean, he, he's he's one of the all time greats, and if he can really ratchet it up to to eleven tonight. I think they might steal the show. There's definitely a potential there. I'm looking forward to it, and I think Kevin Owens will win. He has to win, you know. Although, again, last year, AJ Styles, Chris Jericho, we all knew that, that AJ was going to win because Jericho always puts over the new talent, but, oh, well, I guess he won. So, <laughs> who knows where they're going to go with this, but I definitely feel like Kevin Owens is going to win that title. But more importantly, uh, win the match to end this feud, which has been so well done. You know, uh, great kind of storyline from both, and, uh, yeah, looking forward to this one a lot. So, Overall, WrestleMania 33. The card is interesting and it's very long. It's going to be a long slog again. I, I'm not loving these two hour pre shows and then the four to five hour wrestle. Like, Jesus Christ. Um, it's, last year was, was so tough. It was so tough. Uh, not a good, not a good WrestleMania. Well, not a great WrestleMania. It was a good WrestleMania, not a great one. Um, I hope, I'm hoping for more for this one. Again, like I said, I'm looking forward to the spectacle. At the big stage and the pyro and everything, the big entrances, a couple of surprises maybe. There's been some rumored, I won't go into them just in case, but uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the WrestleMania feeling of it more than anything. I feel like there isn't really one match, I'm just dying to see it. It's the overall package that sells it, I guess. But Reigns and Taker, I'm, I'm most interested in and look, kind of cautiously looking forward to. Kevin Owens, Jericho, Brock Lesnar, and Goldberg, just from a purely kind of morbid fascination with what's going to happen with that one um and aj shane you know i'm really intrigued to see if they've got a, you know an ace up the sleeve with that one if they're going to pull a double switch on us a triple switch or you know if it's just going to be a straight wrestling match and i really don't know where they're going with it i really can't predict it so but hopefully aj wins that match at least but then again i i, I don't feel like it would hurt him if he lost it but yeah, so that's about it really. So let me know if you have any thoughts about predictions predictions for WrestleMania, even though this video will be going up right before it and you'll have no time whatsoever. Um, sadly, um, I, I just I should have filmed this earlier, but I didn't have the chance to, so it is what it is. Uh, and if this if you see this after WrestleMania, leave me your thoughts on WrestleMania down below and, and maybe I'll do a video talking about what I thought of WrestleMania next week. Again, I don't do these wrestling videos that often, but uh I figured I'd do it now because I'm looking forward to it. I'm quite excited. It's been a fun weekend with the Hall of Fame and NXT and stuff. NXT was pretty good. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Hey, he's alright by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and calling into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...